Okay, first of all, I want to welcome everyone who has come to our show, uh, The History of Virtual Reality by John Lovins and Mike Carroll, June 14th, 2016, at the Marmalade Library here in Salt Lake City, a very historical city for the actual history of virtual reality. We present to you the subject of history of virtual reality and having fun with VR. First of all, we are not rocket scientists or mega engineers. We are just a couple of crazy mixed up kids who love going absolutely sideways when it comes to having fun with virtual reality. <clears throat> the first few minutes, we are going to stir up the pot a bit, have a little fun, go into the subject, and then after the first two hours, we'll be taking a seven minute break and then go on to new vistas in terms of this most fascinating subject. Uh, you know, uh, today uh, I saw in the internet uh, a landlord trying to sell a new tenant his uh, empty apartment using virtual reality goggles and while the guy was looking into the goggles the whole place was furnished and he said, I'll take it. <laughs> also, uh, uh, virtual reality is used by many different groups. Uh, one of them, I'm not sure if this is true, uh, is a blind group of, of blind people uh, that are uh, putting uh, you know, themselves in midair, jumping out of the airplane and parachuting. The only thing, it, it, it scares the heck out of their dogs. Okay, so. <laughs> If you can imagine dogs wearing a pair of VR goggles, it, it, you wonder what they're thinking, okay? Um, so what is virtual reality? Virtual reality is a computer-generated experience that can simulate physical presence in real or imagined environments. Quite simply, virtual reality can put you there, wherever there may be. How can it be accessed? From full headsets to 360 degree desktop videos, there are a variety of ways to experience VR. High resolution computer screens. Apple seems to have the best computer screens for high resolution 3D virtual reality programs and that also goes into the high 4K resolution. Smartphones, number two, download an app to experience 360 degree content. On your smartphone, navigate using your finger or simply move the phone to use gyro gyroscopic controls. Number three, smartphone and Google Cardboard. A cardboard view is a cheap and easy way to experience virtual reality content using your smartphone. Smartphone and headsets. Headsets offer the most immersive form of experiential storytelling but require a larger investment. One example is the Samsung Gear VR. People are now getting them when they order one or two phones from uh, various uh, companies. The Oculus Rift and HTC Vive are examples of more premium virtual reality devices. They plug into the tower computers and take advantage of their faster processor chips. Again, we are not mad scientists, nor are we mega engineers. We're just some semi-sophisticated VR enthusiasts who enjoy VR. As some would say, some crazy mixed up kids. So our vision of virtual reality uh, started out when I guess I was about 33. I was in a, a subway, uh, not really. <laughs> I was on a movie set for the money train which is a story about somebody that robs the uh, money car in the uh, subway. Uh, it was in downtown Los Angeles, and um, they built this movie set uh, in Los Angeles to do a lot of the pickup shots, and it only cost $9 million to, to build. But in New York, if they had continued shooting, it would have cost $18 million. So I was kind of lucky. Um, so when I was a security guard, it was a late shift, and I found myself there in this subway at midnight guarding the place, okay? My mind was totally blown, 
As I entered the closed, mo closed in movie set, it was actually built on the ground and it, it stood up and it went for a mile. I had actually been in New York on subways and this set was so authentic, my mind couldn't tell the difference. I felt like I was transported to the New York subway instantly. The set was built above ground, as I said, on the middle of a large empty lot. This was my first real VR experience. Everything from the size and scale of the inside of the subway to the plastic tiles and ticket machines literally had my mind going. The inside of this subway was so real to my eyes, my mind literally couldn't tell the difference between this supposed subway I was in versus actually being in a real New York City subway. All night long, I marveled at how exact the production designers were in their simulation of the New York subway. The railways, the walls, the tiles, the dirt and the grime, all absolutely real looking. My mind had a real problem. I thought I was in New York. <laughs> and, and I had been in New York, so it, it, it was just amazing. Now we're going to begin a trek in the history of virtual reality. And right now I'm going to present Mr. Michael Carroll Jr., my partner. Hello folks, uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for coming here. Uh, this, this thing, virtual reality, actually got started in uh, 1955 believe it or not. It was a uh, arcade gimmick by Morton L. Hailing. And he came up with this idea in 1955 where you would go into this, this machine and have the sensation of smell, uh, vision, uh, everything, you know, th uh, stereoscopic. And it was kind of innovated by the time. What, what you're seeing here is probably the prototype that came out in um, 1962. Um, so we had a, a little lag there. 1965, there was a fellow named Ivan Sutherland from Yale University. Ivan Sutherland came up with the first virtual reality display. And uh, does, does that name kind of sound familiar to anybody, Sutherland? Does Evans and Sutherland ring a bell to anybody? Yeah. Well, that's actually University of Utah, right down the street from here. David Evans from the University of U Utah got together with Ivan Sutherland and they started Evans and Sutherland Computer Company, which is right down the street on uh, Research Park. So virtual reality basically got started right here in Utah. A lot of people don't realize that. I actually worked there for a year and they were trying to tell me this. And I said, no, no, that, that, that couldn't be. It, uh, it couldn't be, but it, it was. Uh, virtual reality got started at, at Yale and brought into uh, Utah and it came up with a company. Uh, Evans and Sutherland got into um, simulation, uh, airplane simulation where airlines would land and, and they wanted a way of being able to uh, simulate the real world, but you're not in the real world. So it's a cheap way of doing it where you don't, you're not using real equipment, but you're simulating it on a computer. So this was, uh, this was in the late 60s. They were coming up with uh, innovative 3D graphics, 3D modeling, uh, early, very early uh, 3D in those days. But uh, virtual reality in itself really didn't get going until... Uh, the, the mid 80s, they came up with um, things like the data glove. It was about 1985, NASA Ames Research Center developed virtual reality at the Moffett Field uh, Air Station. And they came up with a very crude wireframe type display. In its day, it was very innovative. In the 90s, they started creating these uh, video games. Sega came up a one where it had a, like a red and black display. Very, very crude looking. It really didn't take off. It was about a $200 machine and nothing really happened with it. I worked at a company called CGSD in the late 90s and we had uh, virtual reality systems. Your head would move around and, and the lagging would, wouldn't be synchronized. You would, you would get sick. 
virtual reality just wasn't there yet. Well, there was a Kickstarter campaign. He generated millions of dollars. Uh, Facebook bought that for $2 billion. The Oculus Rift is going to be the next virtual reality experience. What's the future of virtual reality? What, what do you, uh, any of you have any ideas where, where uh, this thing may go? Holograms. Holograms. Uh, I, I think you might remember the old Star Treks where they had the holly, uh, what would they call, holodeck? That's always been the, uh, that's, uh, that's always been the dream is to be able to walk into a, a space and feel like you're in a, in a real world. And the holodeck was sort of like that where they would do that. But uh, that's going to be years away where they can do that. They have a, they have a ride now called the Void and uh, you could go into a, a, a warehouse and they have different props set up and you put on a helmet and the props synchronize with what you would see on the screen. So if you if you walk up to something and and feel it, it, it would it would there would be actually a physical object there. So you actually feel like you're in this sort of virtual environment, and that's where the the void is going to be. Um, what's that? I th I think at this point they, there's a lot of theories of where this could go. But uh, it's so new, it's sort of like the iPhone, and uh, nobody really knew where the iPhone was going to go. I, I remember somebody showed me the iPhone, and you could, you could look at a web page on it. It, it just, seemed, just seemed strange. So we're, I don't think a lot of people know where this is going to be going in 10 years of such a new technology. Uh, probably video, I mean, obviously video games. And, but it's going to be used for uh, education, uh, hospitals. We use it for surgery. Uh, I think somebody mentioned uh, psych, uh, psych wards or, or uh, you know, to treat a different uh, ailments. So who knows where this is going to go? Yeah, and, and you know, right, right now it's it, it's it's so new that it's still kind of pixelated. But once they once this thing picks up, it's it's going to have a lot better uh, a lot better look to it. Uh, once people spent start spending money on it, you're going to really see see a change. Now, what we what we did tonight was we uh, we brought in the uh, the Gear VR, so people can actually. Uh, and, and I'm sure you, you were mentioning that one of the reasons you came is you want to actually see it. And so we did that for you. You'll be able to, to uh, see this. So we're going we're gonna, to uh, put on the Gear VR and, and let, people, uh, let people see it. Uh, John, did, did you? Yeah, I just had a few more words, and then we'll get right to that. Yeah, OK, so you wanted to say, OK, come on. Come on down, John. All right, thank you. OK. Thank you, sir. You betcha. Okay, moving right along. Um, now it's 2016, and most people are experiencing VR and VR worlds with the Google Cardboard and Samsung Gear VR goggles. Uh, also, USA Today has a VR section on their website called VR Stories. Uh, it's action-packed with 360-degree software videos as well as many other websites are beginning to have the 360 degree uh, videos. How long will this craze or fad or trend last is what VR enthusiasts want to know. Businesses wanting to get into VR are hearing that VR will replace movie theaters and even television and that VR may be a $160 billion industry by 2025. Hey, I'm in, are you? Yeah. <laughs> All right. But wait a minute, where are these Poindexters getting these figures? Most people suspect that this is based on a crazed hope rather than imminent reality. Financial fiascos in VR have been the norm in the past, not the exception. Uh, for example, with Hasbro. Hasbro came out with 
a lot of uh, VR equipment and, and software, and it, and it failed. Uh, but uh, probably didn't have the astronautics and aeronautics with the gyro that uh, the smartphones have today. Um, and even though most smartphones now have a gyro in them, and this assists in the, uh, <coughs> the uh, quality of the VR, and the function of VR devices and software, many people still get motion sickness and the like when using VR devices and components. Uh, not everybody has the, uh, either the guts or the uh, mind balance to handle uh, the VR. It takes a little while to get used to. VR is being used to sell cars like the Audi. The VR goggles show off the car in a variety of VR environments. Uh, it can sell real estate, uh, interior design, many, many uses. VR games are gearing up to be distributed on Facebook using the Oculus Rift. Uh, Warner Brothers, Paramount, Apple, and many PC companies are creating hardware and software for this growing craze. VR goggles are also being created for movie theaters to replace the big screen in some cases and in others perhaps to enhance the big screen experience. VR can be used for many things, entertainment of all kinds, training in education and in science and in medicine. For example, imagine uh, surgical students using the VR goggles to uh, watch the expert surgeons uh, perform virtual surgery. Okay. Um, also, things like uh, industrial training or navigation of ships at sea and, of course, flight simulation of aircraft and spacecraft. Also, in experiencing simulated reality or virtual real worlds. And depending on how it is used, this may have either positive or negative effects on humanity. Where do we fit in? The path is now wide open to get involved in VR for recreation, for vocations and careers in the arts and sciences, and for general use by consumers in both the private and public sectors. Getting ready for the smart car may involve VR driving simulation. Perhaps VR can be used for safety precautions and for general consumer use of smart cars. So there you have it, folks. Uh, we have a whole future ahead of us for all those that wish, that wish to participate and contribute to virtual reality. And of course, augmented reality, which is the use of virtual reality goggles while interacting with a real environment. Thank you very much for coming. Well, I mean, I've gone to these network meetings and they're selling oils. They want to sell their oils and they don't want to see this? Yeah. For 10 no, years, I, it's going to beat the PC? No. I, but they want to sell their oils. I, I embrace technology because yeah. it always innovates people. Yeah. It's inevitable. Yeah. Oh, hell yes. <laughs> Okay, let's see if we can get something cool here. Oh, there's um, the, the rover. Yeah, you're standing over the rover. Yeah. Don't forget to push the button oxygen. Yeah. Nitrogen. <laughs> yeah, if you not, breathe, you, you wouldn't be able to breathe. Like in the Martian, you're going to have a problem. <laughs> yeah, um, the pixelation is a little bit not quite ready. Yeah, right yet, but it's, it'll... It's, it's got a ways to go. But... Oh, hell yes. The old, if you saw the old ones, the pixelation was terrible in 1999. Well, um, trust me, when this gets started, you haven't seen nothing yet. 